Are you struggling to get a good harvest out of your containers? Are you feeling unsure how to properly care for your container plants? Maybe you're getting pests and diseases. Container gardening is an excellent way for struggling vegetable gardeners to enjoy a bountiful harvest without the need for a large outdoor space. However, there are a few common mistakes that can hinder your container grown goodness. In this video, we will discuss the top five mistakes that container gardeners often make and provide you with practical solutions to maximize your success. Let me tell you about the tragic story of Shirley the tomato plant. Shirley had a tough time growing up. I grew up from a seed and she did incredibly well. But during the spring, I became super busy. My watering system took a month to come in and I delayed planting my spring garden. Several of my tomatoes became leggy, nutrient deficient, and bent over since they lacked support. This was one of those seedlings. I planted it on the top of my tower garden hanging over because the stem was already bent. After several weeks of regular watering, it just never perked up and actually got worse despite planting it in nutrient rich soil. Shirley just didn't seem happy here. What would you have done with Shirley? I posed this question to my social media followers and some said plant it sideways in soil. Some said plant it in a pot and others said plant it deep into the ground. I decided to plant it in a pot and place it on my porch. The other side of my porch had a happy tomato so I figured that the porch had enough light. I wanted to act quickly so I looked at what pots I had on hand and found some buckets. I noticed the buckets already had drainage holes on the side with a rubber seal around it, but two buckets were stuck together and I couldn't get them apart no matter how many times I banged them on the ground and tried to pry them apart. I figured since it had the rubber seal separating it, then it would drain into the other bucket. I went ahead and planted Shirley in the bucket. I provided plenty of water, but Shirley never recovered and even got worse. I thought the wilting was due to transplant shock, but she continued to get worse and leaves began to die. I kept giving her water. I thought maybe she wasn't getting enough sun on the porch. So I brought her outside where I later snapped this photo. The bucket was so heavy carrying it out to the garden. I raked my fingers through the soil and that is when I began to smell that characteristic rotting smell of anaerobic decay. And I knew I had just drowned Shirley. I began to dump the water out of the bucket, but it was too difficult. I dug Shirley out and saw that the roots were dark. I knew that it, it, I was too late and I gave up. I couldn't save this one, even though I was a plant doctor. So now I'm gonna go over the five biggest mistakes and I'm gonna reference Shirley throughout these mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes is selecting containers that are too small for the plants you wish to grow. Inadequate space restricts root development and limits nutrient intake, leading to stunted growth. Instead, opt for containers that provide ample room for root expansion. For example, if you want to grow tomatoes, choose a container that is at least 18 inches in diameter and 12 inches deep. A five gallon bucket is commonly used for growing tomatoes. This will allow the roots to spread out and absorb nutrients more effectively. In my Shirley example, the overgrown tomato seedlings needed to be bumped up to another size because they became root bound so that it was difficult for them to absorb water and nutrients. Proper drainage is crucial to prevent root rot and other moisture related issues. Many gardeners make the mistake of using containers without drainage holes or insufficient drainage material. If there is no oxygen in the root zone, the plant will not pull water up into the plant, which causes wilting. To ensure adequate drainage, drill holes in the bottom of your containers. This pot didn't have drainage holes and my toddler decided to provide it with a lot of water. I didn't realize it for a day or two. It made a recovery, but many don't. In my Shirley example, this was evident when the buckets had stuck together. I mistakenly thought that the rubber seal would allow some drainage, but it didn't. So the plant sat in water. For large containers, you can help drainage and either make them lighter or heavier by using different materials at the bottom. Lightweight fillers include packing peanuts or styrofoam blocks, unused plastic pots turned upside down and recycled plastic containers. If your planter will be top heavy and you wanna weigh a large container down, you can use broken pieces of ceramic or brick, 
large rocks, or pieces of wood logs. Fillers that allow excess water to escape preventing water waterlogged soil. For either, it is best to place landscape fabric to divide the soil and the fillers. Maintaining proper moisture levels is crucial for the health of container-grown vegetables and herbs. Many gardeners make the mistake of either underwatering or overwatering their plants. Check the moisture content of the soil regularly by sticking your finger about an inch deep into the soil. If it feels dry, it's time to water. You can also check the weight of the pot by tipping it. If it is heavy, then it has enough water. If it is light, it, then it needs water. You can purchase inexpensive moisture meters to place in your pot that serve as a visual reminder of the moisture content. If it is blue, then it has enough moisture. If it's white, then it needs to be watered. Cycles of really dry, then really wet, can stress the plant, making it more prone to insects and diseases. Here are some symptoms you can look for to know if it is overwatered or underwatered, although in both cases wilting may occur, like I mentioned with Shirley. When plants are underwatered, there may be drooping or folded leaves. The leaf tips may be brown and the leaves may yellow eventually falling off. The growth will be stunted and leaves may become crispy, although once the leaves become crispy, it may be too late or you'll lose those leaves. An obvious sign will be dry soil. If you are overwatering your plant, the leaves may be brown or yellowing and wilting. The leaves, leaf tips may be brown and parts of the plant may become moldy. The new and old leaves may fall off. When it comes to the roots and soil, it may be stinky and the roots rotting and slimy. Avoid overwatering by ensuring your containers have proper drainage and use self-watering containers or watering techniques like bottom watering. Bottom watering involves placing the container in a tray of water and allowing the plant to absorb water through the drainage holes at the bottom. It's tempting to pack as many plants as possible into a single container, but overcrowding can lead to competition for nutrients, water, and sunlight. Each plant needs sufficient space to grow and thrive. Follow the recommended spacing guidelines for each vegetable or herb to avoid overcrowding. For example, if you're growing lettuce, provide at least six inches of space between each plant. If you have limited space, consider growing smaller varieties or focusing on companion planting where compatible plants grow together and support each other's growth. I've seen several people mention that their carrots are small when they finally pick them, and that is often because they are planted to get close together or never thinned out like these carrots that I picked. Most vegetables and herbs require a minimum of six to eight hours of direct sunlight per day to flourish. Placing your containers in shaded areas or indoors can severely limit their growth potential. Ensure your plants receive ample sunlight by positioning your containers in the sunniest spot available. For example, if you wanna grow basil, place your containers near a south facing window or on a sunny balcony. If sunlight is limited, you can utilize reflective surfaces such as white walls or mirrors to redirect sunlight onto your plants. You can also focus on planting leafy or root vegetables that can handle partial sunlight. In the same corner that I had Shirley in, I placed another tomato and even though another tomato did great on the opposite side of the porch, this one never fruited despite getting plenty of flowers and grew leggy with smaller leaves. Which mistake have you made or have you done them all? By avoiding these common mistakes, you can ensure the success of your container garden and enjoy a bountiful harvest of fresh vegetables and herbs. Remember to choose the right container size, provide adequate drainage, avoid overcrowding, maximize sunlight exposure, and maintain proper moisture levels. With these tips in mind, your container grown goodness will thrive, bringing joy and delicious flavors to your table. Happy container gardening!